Hey, big evasive high radical here. Sorry it's taken so long. Um, it's life. <laughs> um, there's the usual. Uh, don't want to go through and explain everything we've been talking about, so anybody that's just picking this up, go back and watch the rest of it. Uh, always good to, to have this dialogue and interchange. Uh, so I'll start off here. Uh, and again, I, I had to write it out and I talk too much, so or write too much and talk too much. So here we go. Um, start off with I wanted to put forward a few points. Um, as of late, I've noticed in the field of my perception a convergence between the topics that you, Big Evasive, and I've gotten into and the, the seemingly unrelated realm of the many individuals that I have uh, calling out my faith uh, by virtue of, of their perception of it as a cult. And uh, so I'm hoping to get an adjoining video soon with this uh, series, uh, another, just another clump, you know, video response that deals more directly with uh, the cult issues. Uh, but I, and I believe they'll be of interest to you and potentially others uh, in this discussion. Um, but I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, and another point before I, I dive head in here is that I feel the need to emphasize that uh, I don't have any kind of a of a broad-based or underlying or shunning of technology or, or social advancement. Um, I especially feel to point out uh, there's a statement by Brigham Young. He says that uh, essentially this is for you know isn't verbatim, but he says essentially that all attainments and advancements in the arts and, and technology and sciences belong to the saints. And uh, now this isn't some arrogant you know uh, possessing link claim to physical goods or, or uh, intellectual property uh, of others. It's more an assertion that, that progress is something that uh, the faithful are, are supposed to embrace and uh, find a way to use those advancements to uh, advance humanity and, and our faith, uh, what we hold to be the kingdom of God on earth. And so, in short, um, Mormons are to embrace light and truth wherever we can find it. And so I just, I, I just get the sense... Um, you know, and I, I can see how this comes up, but I just wanted to make that clear that I, I'm all for technological advancement. Um, some may not think that, but um, I also had a little uh, kind of a side. Um, there, well, there's always the, there's an old quote that I like that I've heard that says, uh, "Be not the first by which the new is tried, nor the last to lay the old aside." And this this theme will probably run throughout this video series. But um, so we try to always ensure that the technology we employ is employed in a manner that, that brings more good than harm. <laughs> and a good example of this is the internet. Um, it's a generally running fact that the number one use of the internet is for pornography. Um, that's kind of generally accepted. There's been you know, spikes when uh, personal. Um, social networking sites that have, have peaked use on that but even then you get into some uh, kind of intermixing on some of those I know um, but the, the second generally speaking the second most use highest use for the internet has been genealogy and our church has kind of been at the forefront of that um, to point this out there's a project that they've been working on for the past decade and they're soon to release it and utilizing uh, technology that at the time it was conceived of, a lot of the technology didn't exist. And now they're going to launch this, and it's estimated that the, uh, the servers, the base that they'll have for this database will be 18 petabytes. And that's pretty massive, if, especially when you look at um, the Library of Congress. You could fit the whole of the Library of Congress onto about um, 20 terabytes, and that's, that's about 2% of a petabyte. So if you've got you know, 18 petabytes and 2% and of one of those will fit the whole contents of the Library of Congress. I, I hope that just brings out the fact that as Mormons we don't shun technology, um, not, but not by any stretch. Um, and I'm going to try to, again, start from a key point um, in our discussion, and I'm hoping that I can cover um, all the salient points that you brought up in the course of this, this you know, answer 
in some cases rebuttal, in some cases just you know a response. And I, I won't, so I do this to try to convey the big picture while also you know covering all my bases uh, because I I feel that a lot of the points, most all the points you bring up are, are good points. And so I want to make sure I address them. And if, if you feel at any time that I've, I've missed something or um, whatever, feel free to bring it up. Um, so uh, I want to look at first off at the fundamentals of life and, and their properties. Uh, the primal item that generally comes to mind is, is the basic RNA and DNA uh, structures and patterns uh, regarding biological life. Um, these molecular constructs seem to be the modus operandi of life. It's just how life happens. And, and very few items I've found are outside of this. I'm only aware of, of the misnomer nanobacteria as being potentially a much removed being much removed in, in terms of structure from uh, virtually all known life uh, structures. And it, it seems clear to have some mechanism or pattern, this um, nanobacteria, as it's called, to replicate itself. And so, um, anyway, there's, any. this is a side note, anybody who's interested in that, I, I learned about, I haven't read the book, but I've heard about it. There's a book called The Calcium Bomb, or look up the term nanobacteria. It's, it's quite interesting, a discovery as of late. But um, I, I point out DNA and RNA uh, because they, they speak a bit to the nuance of the topic that we're discussing re regarding your troubles with my claims that humans or, or anyone have a character that's innate, that's natural. Uh, and that is that... Um, well, you point out that you don't agree with that we have an innate nature, that there's something there. And uh, to some degree, I, I, I don't disagree with this. Uh, the, f the fitness of something is tied to, to the environs, the, the environment in which it's found. And so you argue that since contingencies, the environment that something is found in, are, are constantly in flux, its manifestation, if it's going to survive, uh, will also be in flux. 